Today, we're gonna talk about how to build a fuel system for your LS swap. If you've been thinking about doing an LS swap on one of your vehicles, you've probably been wondering about fuel systems. So I'm gonna show you two main ways that you can build a fuel system. Now, before you start, you're, you're gonna to wanna to know the direction you're going with your build. Is it gonna be a normally aspirated build? Are you gonna go turbo eventually? Are you gonna run E85? And also, what's already on your car? Is it a newer vehicle that's already got fuel injection or is it an older car that's carbureted? You're gonna to have to retrofit a lot of stuff. Originally, when I was working on this 5.3 right here, this was gonna go into the Chevelle and the plan was to go turbo and eventually E85. So I made a couple choices that I thought made sense for that direction. I was also trying to do it on as much of a budget as possible. If you have an old carbureted car, you know that you're gonna to need to probably run all new fuel lines. You're gonna need some kind of solution for your tank or to run a fuel cell. And I had looked into some of that stuff and some of the stuff was pretty costly. So what I did was I picked up this tank. So this is a tank out of a 94 to 96 Caprice or Impala SS. And the reason I picked this tank is because it has the rear fuel fill just like the Chevelle. And this tank will go into a Chevelle with just a couple modifications. You have to trim a little bit and add a few inches to the gas tank straps, but this will drop right in. And this gives you a fuel injection ready tank. It's got like the right basket, the right lines with quick connects here for GM stuff. And uh, this one already has a pump in it. So I could potentially just use this pump as is if I were gonna go that direction. I picked this setup up for 25 bucks. 25 bucks with a pump is pretty good. The issue with the Camaro was that somebody had already just hacked the trunk and it came with a fuel cell. So I decided rather than try to solve the whole track down a tank, put in a new trunk floor, do all this work, I, I would use the fuel cell and set that up for my LS swap fuel system. So that's kind of the first step. Are you gonna use a stock tank? Are you going to use a fuel cell? Now there, there's a couple other things you need to think about. Are you going to do an internal or an external pump? So that Chevelle tank has an internal pump. It's a factory pump, they're quiet. There's not much we have to do with that. With a fuel cell, I need to use an external pump. So that makes a different setup. So there are also a couple other things you have to think about when you're building this. And I'll show you on the intake manifolds. This is a factory 5.3 intake manifold out of a, a Suburban. It's just your typical truck manifold from the year 2000. So this would be a Gen 3 5.3. And if you look at the intake and the fuel rail setup, it's got a return line, it's got like uh, the regulator built in and the regulator references vacuum. These setups are actually really good on these trucks. The fuel rails will support a lot of horsepower. You usually don't have any issues with this, but this is a return line. Now, if I go way over here, we have 5.3, sort of the same setup, but this is just a couple years newer. And it is a drive-by wire, not drive-by cable, and it is returnless. So it's only got a feed line and no return line. Other than that, it's about the same. But if you only have a feed line and no return line, your fuel pressure doesn't really have anything to do with the vacuum or your map sensor or any of that. It's just, it's just stable. Whereas the one from 2000, as the vacuum changed, in the manifold, your fuel pressure would change. So that's also another thing to think about because if you switch that, you're gonna have to do tuning anyway on your car, but you may have to do some tuning according to the changes in fuel pressure. I have a bunch of other stuff sitting here that has to do with those two types of builds. So let's talk about the first option with the Chevelle first. So when I was building the Chevelle, it was gonna be turbo, eventually E85. So it was going to be a return style fuel system where the fuel flows to the fuel rails and it also has a return line all the way back to the tank. Uh, you could do the other way too. It, they each present their own set of challenges. So, but here's what I got for that setup. So the first thing that I got was some fuel line. And this is the fuel line that I like to use. It's AeroQuip AQP socketless. And this is dash six right here. So as the numbers get bigger on fuel line, the size internally, the fuel line gets bigger. But the reason I like AeroQuip AQP is that it's a braided line. It's safe for high pressure of fuel injection and it's in our NHRA approved. So you can run this through your entire car and it will pass tech if you're gonna take this to a track. Now I have a big, I have about 20 feet of dash six and then I had 20 feet of dash 10, some great big line because I needed big enough line f to feed enough fuel for the turbo for E85. The other thing I like about AQP is that it's relatively stable when you use it with E85. A lot of ethanol fuels will eat your fuel lines if they're not made for that. So that's something you gotta check out if you're thinking about running E85. So for that Chevelle setup, the return setup that was built for a turbo setup, here's how the setup was gonna be. So this is a Walbro 
450. So a lot of a lot of people call this the Hellcat fuel pump. And the plan was to run multiple of these, maybe staged depending on boost, and tee them into the fitting on that tank that I just showed you that's around the corner over there. You could run, one of these would do fine for normally aspirated. You, you're not gonna run out of fuel at all for a regular one, but I was going to run at least two of these, maybe three, depending on how much boost and how much fuel it needed, especially if it was gonna run E85. So those were going to all tee into one and into a big dash 10 line. So this is a dash 10 fitting. It's a lot bigger than this would be the, the dash six. So as you can see, that's a pretty big difference in size. So dash 10 line to this fuel filter. So this is inexpensive fuel filter that's got just a metal screen inside. And the reason I went with that is if you're going E85, a lot of times that can dissolve filter elements. The metal filter would keep that from happening. And uh, this is pretty inexpensive too. And it comes with different size fittings on the end. So you can use it with whatever size you need, you need for your fuel system. Out of that, would go dash 10 line all the way up to the intake manifold, all the way to here where the factory fittings are. And the great thing is you can buy um, lots of these factory push on AN style fittings. So you can get these for all of your points on your fuel system. And just note, these are two different sizes here. So you want a different size fitting for each one. So this would go quick connect fitting. And then the return line, I was gonna run dash six all the way back to that tank. And that was gonna be that fuel system so that's a that's a pretty reasonable setup a couple hundred dollars with my cheap tank but there's also an easier way to build a fuel system less parts less cost less work and i'll show you that right now all right so here's the setup that we're going to use out of the fuel cell on the camaro we're actually going to use a similar setup when we do the ls swap on that c10 out there as well so i'm going to use this aeroquip dash six line so we're going to come out of the fuel cell straight into that big pre-filter and then it's going to go into this bosch style external pump gsl 392 i believe this is one of those bosch 040 whatever you call it pumps rubber mounts so that there's less noise because external pumps are a little bit noisier and then this is going into a corvette filter regulator so this is the part that makes an LS swap fuel system really easy. So this is the filter and regulator in one and you can have it right at the tank. It has the feed and then the return line. So our return line only needs to be maybe two feet. So we go fuel cell, filter, pump, filter, regulator, and then the return line goes here and then you just run one line all the way up under the car into the intake manifold where I'm gonna use those same push on fittings but I'm gonna just cap the return line fitting. And then that also renders this vacuum reference useless. There may be something that needs to be done here. Now what this will change is the fuel pressure was going to be different than this car did from the factory. So when you're tuning a car like this, the tables compensate for the fact that your pressure goes up as your vacuum drops. This is just gonna be constant pressure with this regulator. So we definitely have to retune the fuel tables and uh, do some tuning to get that fueling consistent once that's set up because it's a different setup. Obviously we're gonna have to tune it anyway because we're doing a cam swap and all that stuff too. That is the setup that we're using on the Camaro. Now there's a couple things that are really nice about this. You can get fittings for this that are all the factory push on fittings. This will go straight into here and then I'm back to my dash six AN fitting for my line. So I don't have to have any hose clamps it's all AN fittings. Uh, another thing to think about is I have these rubber mounts for all these so we can get rid of the vibration and then lots of these rubber mounts to mount the fuel line to the frame. Here's a quick look at what some of that fuel system put together looks like. This isn't finished, but this is the fuel cell setup. I've made this cage to put the fuel cell in. Fuel cells down here, it's gonna, it's gonna strap into this cage. And then here's a bracket that I've mounted all the fuel system to. So I've got my feed line going into my filter, which goes into my external pump, into Corvette regulator. And then you can see my return line going back, which will go back to the fuel cell. And it's got all these 
AeroQuip fittings on the end. It's got all the quick disconnect fittings. And one thing I didn't talk about with this AeroQuip AQP hose. So this is what I really love about this hose. It's called AQP socketless because you custom make your hoses, you cut them to length, and then you put all your, your fittings here on the end. So here's the dash six version. I've got a really big dash 10 fitting right here. And obviously you can see the difference in size. Dash 10 will flow way, way more to support a lot more horsepower. But for our build, this dash, dash six will be sufficient. But here is what those AeroQuip AQP fittings look like. They look just kind of like barb fittings, but they're, they're made specifically for that socketless hose. And you push really, really hard into that socketless hose. And there is no way that that comes out. You don't need any extra tools, any extra fittings, and that is safe for whatever you're gonna use it for. And this is not gonna come apart on you. 